You know what? She was she was one in a million. Check with this one. She challenged the unchallengeable, right? She challenged the stock market. She challenged business. She challenged her peers. She challenged the way business was done, and she did it in a way that was braver than whatever is in existence today. Welcome to the Stepping Up video, and welcome to. For 30 years, Anita Roddick didn't realise she'd unknowingly contracted hepatitis C from contaminated blood. Her daughter remembers the moment her mother broke the news and explained the cause was the blood transfusion she'd received after complications giving birth to Sam. She got it through the transfusion um, when I was born. And, you know, I could really hear the uh, vulnerability in her voice because my mum really feared death. So she had a phrase which was, isn't it amazing, Sam, every year you pass the date of your death and you don't know it. Thousands of people contracted hepatitis C, some also got HIV as a result of this contaminated blood. Mm -hmm. And we know about that now. But you know, to step back from it and just think, she went into hospital to have a baby. Mm. And she came out yeah. with this disease and then didn't know about it for all that time. For her to be able to contract that during something that um, that was su such a kind of a, a, a normal procedure is really uh, sad. The strange thing is, is that even I felt responsible. Like I, for somehow that kind of that sense of oh, you know, it's ironic because you always think actually I was a baby, I couldn't protect my mum, but yet she was going in because she was pregnant with me. So there, there was that first level of. Um, irrevocable or, or, or uh, um, unconscious guilt, you know, that it's just ridiculous, but it still exists. And if she'd found out earlier, what would that have meant, do you think? If she had found out really early, she could have had a treatment, possibly at the time, interferon. She couldn't have interferon because of her high blood pressure. She couldn't get a liver transplant again. So, you know, my mum was just literally deteriorating and you could see she was exhausted. So, you know, she could have got a lot of medical assistance. And could she have survived much longer if she had been? Yeah, I think she could have survived a lot longer. Who do you blame? Personally, well, I love the NHS. I actually think it is uh, the backbone of British society. I would fight for the NHS the whole time. You know, the m people who are making the money out of this are the large pharmaceutical corporations. That's who I kind of blame. They're the ones that, you know, um, really violated good governance. Did you ever as a family think about suing? No, I mean, our family aren't sewers. But also at the same time, our family, um, are very financially independent. So I think the best way we can serve is by highlighting uh, this issue and try to kind of appeal to people to come forward if they have needed or if they've had the procedure of a blood transfusion during the dates that you know have been highlighted and to get tested. I mean, I personally, you know, think that anybody who has been affected, who doesn't come from my financial background, should sue. I think there has been a huge lawsuit in America of Bayer and a number of the corporations that were held uh, responsible. And there was like, what a sick, I, I mean, in the billions that uh, got paid out. And the Prime Minister announced an inquiry recently into this. What was your reaction to that? I think it's a good, I think there needs to be a true independent inquiry. I think it is now about stepping forward and really trying to put the pieces together about why and how this occurred and those responsible should be held accountable. I definitely believe when you actually look at the significant amount of contaminated blood, it seems impossible for there not to be an enormous number of people that this touches. It must have been incredibly painful to watch your mother deteriorate. Mm. Yeah, well, it was incredibly painful. It was incredibly painful uh, to see somebody so powerful, so effective, so energetic, have somebody who has a lust for life, you know, really have to face her limitations at a time where it was kind of cut short. You know, like, you know, our family had a, a huge loss, but the world had a huge loss too. She was the first company to open up a crash in her factory so people could breastfeed and continue on caring for their children during lunchtime. I think that was shows how she loved her workforce and wanted to create a humane environment. Um, the fact that she changed EU law um, and 
got the ban of animal testing in the whole of the EU just shows how accomplished she was when she put her mind to it. I mean, all of her campaigns were phenomenal. Uh, you know, the recycling, the sourcing. She was the first person to take um, fair trade out of the charity sector and put it into the commercial environment. And you don't seem to be either bitter well. or angry, but maybe that's just... I'm not angry, I'm sad. I think there's bitterness will eat at your own soul. And a part of my utilizing my anger is by being available to highlight this issue um, and trying to encourage and support um, people to make those accountable be accountable. And I think that's a really healthy way to challenge, channel your my anger anyway. And presumably you miss her every day, do you? Oh yeah, I miss her every day.